What scientific experiment would you run if money and ethics weren't an issue? I'd raise a group of children from birth to adulthood kinda a Truman Show thing without any contact with music and see how it affects their lives and personalities. I'd make sure everything else would be normal but music would be edited out of their lives. What could be really interesting is if you only played the music in odd time signatures like 5, 8 or 7, 8 or how their music developed from there. Our music is based mainly around 4, 4 and 3, 4 etc. So it would likely be really different. The Doctor Who episode wherein they bred artificially grown humans. Infect the meat with all known diseases so that they can develop antibodies curés. Not necessarily a scientific experiment, but a series of experiments to see how you can control nerve sensations from the brain and whether a poo can create VR that can perfectly mimic the sensation of touch whilst being motionless. As if you're moving and touching something in a virtual world, but not in the real world. Is that even possible? Calm down Akihiko Keiba. Redesigning the human sinus. I wish to find a way to modify the body to fix that mess of an airway. Sometimes I think about how there's just hollow cavities behind your face and get really anxious. Specifically the Mayo Clinic illustration that comes up when you google sinusitis. That shit makes my chest tight. From the time I was born I was sick for 5 straight years with remissions lasting maybe a week here and there with the docs scratching their heads as to why. Finally they decided my mom must have Munchausen syndrome. As a nurse and mother, she was very offended by this and told them to do a full body CAT scan or else she wasn't taking me home. They found out I was born without sinus openings and or polyps in my sinus cavities can't remember which and I had to have holes drilled in my head and tubes put in M. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery, or FES, I think it was called. Everything improved after that. Still get sinus headaches a lot but that's neither here nor there. Have a baby human raised by apes. Basically to see if Tarzan scenario would occur and the human is able to communicate fully with the apes. There have actually been a lot of cases of wild children who were raised with animals most often dogs as they are the most likely to bond with humans. But I believe there may have been one with monkeys. Look up feral children and you'll find plenty of articles and stories. Link. I may be wrong, but a lot of those stories sound like folklore or made up. Mainly the ones where the appearance changed like the 6 year old boy who grew hair all over his body and the other child who had sharp teeth after living in the wild for a few years. There's just no way they transform like that in little time. The only one I could barely believe are the two girls living in the wolf den I can kind of understand their tendons becoming deformed from their posture. Force compliance on specific diets with a diverse sample of people and a well regulated control group. Follow for 10 plus years. Is veganism really healthy? How about palia? Should we never be eating gluten or dairy? Edit to add. This has definitely not been done before. Because there are several problems with this kind of study. You can't force people to comply to a diet. Which is the first hurdle. You could have people voluntarily report what they eat. But this isn't a randomized trial. And has its own issues. Recall issues. Compliance. Self selection bias etc. You're also missing a good control group to compare results to. Then if there is a population that follows a certain diet, say people from the Mediterranean following the Mediterranean diet, you run into the problem of correlation versus causation. There could be something different about their lifestyle that is explaining the health differences. Besides diet, same issue as above. No control group. There's also the huge issue of not having a longitude study. Most short term trials examining diets are just that. Short term. It's hard to ascertain if there are health effects show up 10 or 20 years down the road. Also, people claiming that they know what diets are healthy unhealthy. I'm sure that's true of some diets types of foods. And research non-experimental data, even with its flaws, can point us in the right direction. I'd feel pretty good saying that eating more vegetables is healthier for the vast majority of people. Eating Doritos is not healthy for the vast majority of people, but there is so much we don't know about optimal nutrition and how different populations react to food. I'd love to see an actual high quality experiment. Second edit. You can't experiment on prisoners. This seems to be a common question. 
Even an experiment you feel is benign is unethical. Prisoners are unable to properly consent because they, rightly, feel their liberty is at stake for consenting. They are therefore not able to consent to an experiment, which means you can't run it. Most of the laws and norms that were passed stating this were conceived after World War II when researchers were quite literally concerned about preventing the crimes of the Nazis from taking place again. The Chilligan's Island Experiment. Shipwreck 100 people with vastly different backgrounds, wealth disparity, and personalities on a remote island. See what kind of civilization grows from it, then do it 50 more times to check results against each other. Someone wrote a book about this. Basically there are a number of case studies. You might find it interesting. Look it up. They are called shipwreck societies. Edit wow this blew up during Thanksgiving. The name of the book is Blueprint by Nick Christa Kiss. The link is here link. Enjoy all. Happy Thanksgiving. There's also an island in the South Pacific. Pitcairn Island. Whose inhabitants around 50 are the descendants of the mutineers of HMS Bounty. Their society. Basically lots of child rape, which, when brought to trial, included their lawyers arguing that they didn't know rape was illegal. The British government had to build a prison especially for them. How would the world react to a mountain of 100 billion pennies for free in the middle of a major area? This sounds so dumb, but is really ducking interesting, if or who think about it. Oh man I love this question. There are a ton of geoengineering experiments that I'd love to run if they weren't both one illegal, two insanely expensive, three non-zero possibility of death and destruction, iron fertilization, basically dumping tons of iron dust into the ocean to cause an algae bloom, which should sequester a bunch of carbon and help mitigate global warming, cloud seeding, space mirrors, dropping a nuke into a volcano, you know, normal stuff. What are the downsides of iron fertilization? A big ass algae bloom would block sunlight and kill tons of water vegetation and the animals that don't eat algae. How athletes from different sports react to fight or flight. Even further, would they fight differently than others? UFC fighters just walking around killing all of the other athletes. Dinosaur cloning. What else is there to do? Humans have quite a few movies that tell you. The dinosaur cloning is a bad idea on earth. Genetic altering of humans. I don't currently have an issue with anyone that wants to do it on themselves. However to do it to an embryo or through the parent's DNA to see what we could do to advance humans would be amazing. Alterations to intelligence, memory, physical attributes, gills to swim underwater, visual alterations to see the full light spectrum and hearing for the full sound spectrum. Immunity to all diseases and harmful bacteria. Ability to eat almost anything for sustenance. Definitely this and cloning. If we had no qualms about the ethical implications we would make leaps and bounds in biological sciences. I'd want to see what a society of children would do on their own if they were alone from birth. Of course. Adjustments would have to be made for when they were infants. But beyond that, how would they develop language, ethics, mythology, culture, and as they got older, how would they handle coming of age without adult role models? Though unethical, I think an experiment like that would answer a lot of questions about sociology, psychology, anthropology, and philosophy. It would be like watching the beginning of human society from scratch, with no external influence. Edit yes I have read Lord of the Flies, however that is a work of fiction. Edit to you guys have a lot of brilliant ideas on how to improve this experiment and a lot of true stories to make hypotheses on. I'm really enjoying reading this thread. Kill the pig. Cut his throat. Kill the pig. Bash him in. Kill the beast. Cut his throat. Spill his blood. See if a monkey tribe could become dominant over the rest by training them to make and use weapons and other primitive technology. Also interested in seeing if they would take their newfound knowledge and begin to expand an empire. I've always wanted to try to breed a winter blooming rose. Ethics are fine. But the cost of having that many roses in a hothouse and the decades of selective breeding most likely required to accomplish it would cost an astronomical amount. So I'm sticking with it. This is one of the most interesting replies I've read that isn't cruel or obscure. 
It seems so simple and achievable, yet I fully understand the ridiculous amount of money and work involved as you described it. To achieve the desired outcome. Winter blooming rose. I don't understand this at all. Can you please explain it to me? Why would it take so much money? And what is the goal of this breeding? Roses, like most flowers, are genetically programmed to bloom during a certain time of the year for roses it's late spring early summer, if I remember correctly. To make a rose bloom during winter, you'd have to train the rose over several generations. To make it happen you'd have to trick it into believing that winter is an adequate time of the year for blooming. The goal of this would be to have roses in winter. That's it. Near death experiences and what people see. So basically I'd want to kill a bunch of people then bring them back to life. I'm sure a lot of them wouldn't make it back. CRISP are the absolute duck out of some kids and make some next level humans that can run stupid fast and jump crazy high then make the superhuman olympics and figure out what humans are really capable of. Edit oh shit first gold. You and your offspring will be exempt from my CRISPR trials. I want to send someone to space without a spacesuit. I've read about everything that can happen. I just want to see it on film. Teach a kid the wrong words for everything and see how long it takes for them to adapt. Another edit thanks for the gold. Also, it seems a fair number of people have done this to kids on a very small basis. Seriously. Do not do this to anyone on any scale. This post is based on the concept of setting morals aside. This is a massively horrible thing to do. Edit a few people have commented that this is the same as learning a second language. And I want to address why that is not the case. When you learn a second language, you are assigning a new word that has no previous meaning to you to a concept that you already know. So you know what an apple is, and you stack them on top of that when you learn it in French. But you aren't learning a new word. You're taking a word that already is assigned to another concept and trying to apply it somewhere else. While forgetting the original connection. Your brain isn't good at breaking neural connections. So you have to start thinking that you take a bite out of a car apple and you get in your roof car to drive to blue work. This is much more difficult because your brain automatically tries to learn new things but has no good mechanism for forgetting. Based on comments it seems that some have experienced this with single word swaps and it has been very difficult to overcome. I'm inclined to think that this would actually break someone. Experiment deemed unnecessary. How children develop when occasionally microdosing LSD. How long a decapitated head stays conscious. All we have are anecdotes that might have been exaggerated. I've always wanted a definitive answer, but you know, ethics. Brain transplants from humans to animals and vice versa. I will make 5 subjects of sane and healthy mind placed in a facility with 5 psychopaths. Insane murderers. They will have group activities in a pair of two from each group and the activities will be of two types. Moral and immoral. Then I will conduct results about how much these activities affect the subjects in both groups. Edit. They are not in a prison. They are just being volunteers. Prison is totally different scenario and the Stanford prison experiment link had totally different outcomes. These group of two will go through a murder activity. But psychopaths are not allowed to murder their partner or anyone other in the experiment. I've actually thought a ton about this. I would put two people through the exact same conditions the entire life now I'm not talking just similar scenarios but everything from the weather inside the womb to the humans they interact with to the wind every day and I would see if they are the same. Essentially if humans are born with personalities or if we develop them through little things all our life essentially the butterfly effect. To be honest this probably wouldn't even be possible with infinite money but it would be cool. Have an Olympics, where every single athlete is drugged to an insane level. I think it would raise what is possible by today's standards drastically. Raise a child without ever punishing or rewarding them. Just let them do whatever they want. And then see what happens to their behavior when they age. Pretty much any vault tech experiment. I'd like to clone several sets of baby Hitlers and see how they grow up in different environments. Some can include a loving family, the kind that you buff at because they are so perfect, a Jewish family, 
an artistic family that encourages his talent, an abusive family similar to the one he grew up with, a family of scientists, and finally, the most unethical environment, a family of politicians. I'd love to pit elite Madden gamers versus NFL play callers and see who is better at game management and play calling. I'd run a serial killer contest. First person to successfully kidnap and kill 50 people receives 10 million one year after the last kill. If they are not caught by authorities and if they can prove the killings, how many persons would undertake this? How many victims would there be? I would breed and engineer dogs to become more intelligent until they can understand the concept of I'm coming back soon. Don't worry they deserve it for helping us get this far as a species. I'd train gorillas in weightlifting, really see how tanked they can get, boost them with steroids along the way. After that, I'd take my army of beasts, pump them full of cocaine, and let them loose in an empty shopping mall. Wanna see which stores they like, and which ones they don't. Ick now. For science and shit. Edit I've had some fantastic input from you geniuses. To add the gorillas will be trained in all beef up exercises. Even though science is against me on this one. We are gonna throw some PCP in with the cocaine. Cybernetic hearts to handle the load of coke. Yada. 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 Thought I had more on this. Oh. And the mall is empty. Because I'm not a freaking murderer. You guys. Quit trying to kill everyone. Not all science is about death. Jeez. To measure the effect on development of humankind by eliminating the least intelligent 5% of the human population every year based on monthly standardized testing. Iron Man suit. Ethics don't even need to be ignored. I just really want a complete Iron Man suit with all the weapons. Flight and F. R. I. D. A. Y. Edit you guys seem to be worried about how I'm going to power the suit. All Iron Man suits have an arc reactor built into the chest. Even the MK1. I asked for a suit, so I'm probably gonna make something similar to the arc reactor built into the chest. I've always been really curious what the results of the Holocaust twin experiments would be if they were run by a sane person. If I didn't have to worry about the fact that I was slaughtering a bunch of children which very much goes against my morals. I'd recreate those 